Hello, Janice. Hi, Anthony. Today we'll talk about when someone died, but nobody wants to be the executor. Um, so we often get hired after, the, you know, we, we get named in wills, obviously, but we also get often hired after the fact somebody's died, but that there's nobody who wants to do the job of being the executor. Uh, sometimes that means there was a will, but all the nominated executors just are like, nope, not me. I don't want to do it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and then other times there was no will. And similarly, um, the way it works is you have the sort of next of kin who are um, eligible to be the administrator of an estate. And they don't want to do it either. <laughs> right, right. So in each of those situations, they find me and they're like, hey, can you, can you handle this? And yes, we will handle that as your professional executor. Okay, so why? Why does this happen? We'll cover that so that folks might understand why, um, why you might, might, uh, might want to seek out a professional executor. Number one, being an executor is just too much work. So this, is, this often comes up with people who have done it once before <laughs> and they know yeah. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I'm not talking about husband and wives or like adult child for a, a parent they were close with. Those can be worked through. Those are, especially spouses, that's generally easier because there's a lot of like joint accounts. There's a lot of shared knowledge. Um, but if you're a nephew or an uncle or even adult, an adult child that, you know, have your own life, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So you know, if you've done it before, how extremely time consuming it can be. And even if you haven't done it yourself, um, if you're at a certain life stage, if you're actually older, you probably have had, you know, close friends or family members who have done it. So you've heard, you know, one degree by one degree of separation, uh, the horror stories, and you're like, that was close enough. I'm not going to yeah. actually do it myself. <laughs> Thank you. And plus, if you've ever listened to our podcast, I think we've also talked about how hard and how complex being an executor is, right? I mean, I mean there are folks out there who are like, oh, no, it's not that hard. But yeah, you know what? Diff different people have different pain tolerances, right? <laughs> yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yes. All right. So another reason we often see is uh, that, and this is self-described. I'm not, I'm not pointing a finger or saying this, but folks come to us and say, I'm too old to be an executor, okay? So why would they say that? Um, even if they've been nominated, uh, maybe they were nominated when they were a bit younger, and now you know years have passed since that plan was put into place, and now they're like, oh, maybe it's not right for me. And I don't mean old like, oh, I'm incompetent or mentally unfit. No, no, no that's not what we're talking about. Because the job is such a huge pain and is so stressful, I mean, if you're retired, and enjoying your life in Florida in the winters and, you know, New York's theater in the right. summers, you don't need this nonsense. You know, you really just don't want to do it. Right. No, no. <laughs> um, and, and it's just like if you're at a certain age and you're managing your stress levels, you know, you do not need this job. <laughs> your <laughs> no, blood pressure no. meds are already at a certain nope. level. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, thanks. This isn't, no, no. But on top of that, just in terms of logistics, uh, we've talked about this before. Being an executor requires a lot of legwork, a lot of doing things in person, running around, going to the real estate, overseeing the cleanup, going, waiting in line at the bank, going to the courthouse. Yep. If you're of a certain age and you have you know, your hobbies, your activities, your fitness routine, you don't need to add this all into the mix. You really don't. <laughs> right. You don't want to postpone your travel plans that you've been waiting on for Great 50 point. years when you've retired to put them on hold to administer an estate of your friend or, you know, great aunt or something. Right. That's a great point. Yeah. And maybe really and a lot of it's done now, not all of it, but by electronic means. Maybe it's just not your thing. You don't have all that access to that technology and the, you know, so I get it. So, that, I mean, that covers the sort of generational issues yeah. or life stage issues, let's call it. Uh, and lastly, uh, you know, me, people rightly wonder, can I be an ex ex state executor if I live far away? I mean, it's, if your executor lives abroad or out of state, um, there are some issues. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, so the main issues are you may be just too unfamiliar with local customs or laws. Um, and just a few examples. Uh, you know, if you're from Colorado, just as an example, you would be completely blown away by, by how New York co-op works, co-ops work. You're like, what? Yeah. Like, I thought I owned this house. Why are these guys telling me like what I can and cannot do? <laughs> um, another example is if you're from Europe, just as uh, an example, you would, you might assume that it's best to wire inheritance funds to your, to your heirs. And wow. you might be shocked to realize that could be a huge mistake, which we've talked about in the past. We have. Yep. We'll have to put a link in there because that's it. very interesting. Yeah. But just a couple of examples of how local laws and customs would, you know, some familiarity would be super helpful. Yeah. 
And then just in general, it's just like we talked about with somebody who might be uh, either too old or at a, at a stage in life where they don't want to deal with this. It's just kind of a lot of too much. It's too much legwork for somebody to do from across the country or even a couple of states away or definitely overseas. Um, yeah. The number of flights back and forth, it would be very, very, you know, if not cost prohibitive, like just pain in the butt prohibitive. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, even just some, a lot of the documents have to be signed in wet ink, right? Oh my gosh. You, you can't do it electronically. And I know that we have sent a, a lot of stuff overseas and one document in one envelope you're looking at $150. Yeah. Now, think if you've got to do that 20, 30 times. Yeah. That's a lot for the estate. So. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. It adds up. I think that's all we have on this issue. Um, yeah. Uh, we're just pointing out for folks, you know, to, if you don't want to do it and nobody in the in the team or the family or the circle wants to do it, there's folks out there like us who will handle it. So, um, don't feel bad. It's very common. And uh, you don't have to feel guilty like, oh, I'm going to do it because it I feel like I'm dishonoring his or her memory. Like, you don't have to do it. <laughs> you, you might be better served, you know, remembering him fondly instead of getting bitter because you did all this pain in the butt work later, you know. Exactly. Um, and I definitely recommend Anthony's book, How to Hire an Executor, available on Amazon. Definitely something to look into if you fit in this criteria here that we talked about. Perfect. Enjoy your traveling. Just enjoy Seriously. it. Seriously. Enjoy your life. <laughs> you earned it. Just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, that's it for today. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Janice, as always. And we will talk soon next time. Bye. Talk soon.